This hour of the Costa Report is brought to you by Dole Food Company, the world's leading producer and distributor of fresh fruits and vegetables. Welcome to the Costa Report. I'm Rebecca Costa, and thank you for joining me for another two hours of Straight Talk Radio. I want to take a moment to welcome members of our armed forces who are tuning in from outposts located around the world, and also new listeners who are joining us from radio affiliates in Texas, California, Wyoming, Florida, New York, North Carolina, and throughout all 50 states, including the sunny shores of Hawaii. This week, we take a break from our political coverage to check in with acclaimed technology pioneer, Mr. Philippe Kahn, who is shaking up the way we look at sleep and rest. He changed our world by inventing the first camera phone, and he's preparing to do it all again. So hang on to your hats as we check in with pioneer and entrepreneur Philippe Kahn. But before Mr. Kahn joins us, as is my custom each week, let me tell you a little about his background. Philippe Kahn was born and raised in Paris, France, and is a graduate of the ETH in Zurich, Switzerland, and has a master's in mathematics degree. He also earned a master's degree in classical flute from the Zurich Music Conservatory. Kahn emigrated to the United States in the early 80s, and the story goes he arrived with $2,000 in a software program he co-developed called Turbo Pascal. That software led to the formation of Borland, Borland Software. Following Borland, Kahn founded three more companies, Starfish Software, LightSurf Technologies, and Full Power Technology, which he founded in 2003, and we'll hear more about in the next hour. I would be remiss if I did not add that Mr. Kahn made technology history when he transmitted the first image taken by a camera phone, a picture of his newborn daughter in 1997. He is also an accomplished flautist, author, and sailor who is credited with breaking the Trans-Pacific double-handed record from San Francisco to Hawaii. Looking over Mr. Khan's accomplishments, it's easy to see that he draws his inspiration from many sources. It's my pleasure to welcome to the Costa Report, technology innovator and inventor, Mr. Philippe Khan. Thank you for joining us today, Mr. Khan. Well, uh, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. I mentioned you draw your inspiration from many sources, and when it comes to your recent work in using sensor technology to improve sleep and rest, I understand the origins of this idea came from one of your Trans-Pacific sailing trips. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. You know, I I sail offshore uh, shorthanded with, uh, you know, two people only on a boat for days in and out for like 10 days, two weeks. And when you do that, you never get to sleep much, and you you never get to sleep much more than 20, 25 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, and you learn how to budget your sleep. And after a while doing that, uh, I realized that there was ways to optimize your actually sleep budget and, and, and perform better. And in order to understand that, I started monitoring sleep with simple monitors, et cetera, on board, because most people don't want to to, to spend 10 days in sleep deprivation. And, and us sailors, when we go offshore and, and, and we, we are in those extreme conditions, we have no, you know, it's something we do by choice. And so we, we studied that a lot and, 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 and came to some, under, you know, very interesting conclusions and then realized that, geez, this could apply to Mrs. and Mr. Everyone and help uh, Mrs. and Mr. Everyone uh, perhaps improve their sleep a little bit, which will improve their life just a little bit. Now, I think you found out that for you, 26 minutes of sleep yielded optimal results in terms of your alertness, your energy levels, and so on. That's correct. What we found out is that that there are, you know, people know that there's different uh, phases of sleep, and it's called polyphasic sleep, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. And there, you know, sleep is a bit like the deep ocean. It's something that we know is there, but we don't understand well. And in fact, modern science doesn't understand sleep very well because it's very difficult to monitor sleep in a non-invasive way. If you go to a sleep specialist, sleep doctor, they will wire you with endless wires and headgear and all that, put you in a in an unfamiliar room in an unfamiliar bed and tell you sleep now and you probably will be completely restless and only sleep for 30, 40 minutes a night. And then, you know, look at that 
sleep recording they made and, and, and tell you that your sleep is this or that. But, but all, all that is is really a, a recording of your disrupted sleep and has very little to do with what you experience every day. And so lots of things happen in the body every day while you sleep. And what we've set up to do is discover that in a, in a non-invasive way, starting with understanding that if you actually work uh, at, 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 at your sleep budget added by, by chunks that are, that are tied to those 26 to 30 minutes, depending on which individual is, you actually recharge your battery in a much more efficient way than, for example, if you'd uh, uh, sleep for 32 or 35 minutes where you'd wake up groggy. And so we, we'd start to understand practical ways in which we can, uh, or everybody, Mrs. and Mr., everyone can, optimize their sleep. So it sounds like for a period of time, sleep is productive in helping you rest and recuperate and re-energize. And then if you go past that, you begin to, it begins to have a reversal effect. That's correct. You have to go way past that to go back to, to, to that, to that recharge mode. And it, it, things go in phases. Uh, there is something known as the mythical eight-hour sleep night. Uh, yes. This was, a, <laughs> this was a, a concept brought together in the Industrial Revolution to get people to, to work longer hours in factories, et cetera. But before the Industrial Revolution, all the records, if you go back to the ancient Hebrews, the Greeks, the, et cetera, uh, Hindus, et cetera, show that people were, were, were mostly – sleeping in two shifts. So it was called first sleep and second sleep. And in between, there was something, sometimes an hour to three hours in which people did things and then went back to sleep. And, and, and nobody really was, was, was sleeping, you know, eight hours straight and, and, and deemed like they were unhealthy if they, you know, if, if they got up and didn't sleep eight hours straight, which is very convenient for people selling, uh, you know, uh, sleep aid pharmaceuticals because, you know, nobody really in modern society, especially when the siren blows in the middle of the night uh, in, in, in the middle of a city and wakes the whole city up, uh, nobody sleeps without getting up or, or waking up. That's a normal thing. In fact, you could argue that the ability of a, of, a, of a human to be able to wake up and go back to sleep rapidly is actually a great measure of the um, – sleep health of that particular individual. And in, in other words, your ability to fall asleep rapidly is actually a great measure of your health, much more so than knowing that you've uh, slept uh, seven hours straight without waking up. Yes, and certainly there's an evolutionary basis, as you point out, uh, going back in history. I'm an evolutionary biologist, so history to me means millions and millions of years. But as a sur- it, there's a survival aspect to this, too, your ability to fall asleep deeply and then at a moment's notice be at, in a ready state is very, very important in nature. Well, absolutely. I mean, if you think about, you know, paleo times uh, 30,000 or 25,000 years ago, uh, you were a human in a cave and the saber's tooth uh, tiger was roaring. You weren't just like, oh, geez, I'm just going to stay straight on my back. In my perfectly <laughs> For eight <dark>. hours. <laughs> <laughs> in my perfectly dark room alone without any distractions. In fact, you were sleeping in a communal basis. There were noises. There were kids waking up. There were uh, people procreating. There was all that going on in, in the community. And the saber tooth t- tiger was 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 roaring outside of the cave yeah. and and your ability to actually be healthy that way was very important in fact you know i always say you know part of the 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 closest uh member of 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 the of the na- nature community that co-evolved with us is is our our canine friends are the dogs and and if you look at a dog i mean i know my dogs they hear something they just jump out almost instantly of the bed they go barking and then they came back. They just come back and they fall back asleep. Yes, that they sleep in very sleep. small increments, and uh, and that's very true. I, I never thought of looking at the fact that my dog doesn't need an eight-hour sleep. <laughs> we have to take our first break, but stay right where you are. We'll be right back with more from Philippe Kahn. You're listening to the Costa Report.
If you're wondering what to do with all that data you're creating, do I have an offer for you? Tableau is drag-and-drop software that people of any skill level can use to analyze and turn data into something actionable. That's right. I said actionable. And isn't that what all that data is for? With Tableau, you can connect to any data in virtually any format and visualize it on the fly. Databases, spreadsheets, even big data sources are instantly combined into usable charts, graphs, reports, and dashboards. People can analyze data and -and drag-and-drop drop at 10 times the speed of a traditional business intelligence system. But the most impressive thing about Tableau is that anyone can use it. And just to prove the point, you can get a free 14-day trial from Tableau just by mentioning you heard this ad. But do it now, because this offer won't last. For your free 14-day trial, visit Tableau at T-A-B-L-E-A-U dot com slash Costa. That's Tableau dot com slash Costa. Tableau Software. What's your data trying to tell you? Caraccioli Cellars recently celebrated their fifth anniversary of their tasting room. This is what Enophiles had to say. My name is Samantha Cooper. The wines are so beautifully crafted, and they're, they're, you take so much time and effort that goes into making it uh, four years to make one bottle of wine, and they're just beautifully crafted, and they come out so amazing. My favorite would have to be the Brut Rosé. It's very near and dear to my heart. It was my wedding wine, actually. They loved it. Edmund Benich. Uh, I love the cuvee. I love the sparkle. It tickles my nose. Sarah Hines. I've been drinking Caraccioli for five years, and I love it. You know, I am across the board on this. I've been drinking their sparkling wine for some time, and I love them all. I entertain a lot. I enjoy entertaining using the Caraccioli wines. Visit the Caraccioli Tasting Room on Dolores Street in Carmel-by-the-Sea, or find us online at caracciolicellars.com, or reach us by phone at 831-622-7722. Hi, everyone. It's MZ to invite you to one of two upcoming free lectures by Doc Wallach, one in Watsonville and the other in South San Francisco. Somebody Needs to Go to Jail is the best lecture Doc has ever done, and everyone should see it. Doc Wallach has the answer to the U.S. health care crisis, and it's real simple and costs very little, and he wants to share it with anyone who will listen. Doc Wallach will appear live at the Best Western Hotel in South San Francisco, California, at 300 South Airport Boulevard beginning at 7 p.m. this next Wednesday, March 30th, and the following evening, Thursday, March 31st, starting at 7 p.m. at the VFW Hall, 1960 Freedom Boulevard in Freedom. Both events are free, and if you attend, you will find that it is impossible to be bored at a Dr. Joel Wallach lecture. In fact, you will be amazed as well as riveted. Email mz at kscohealth.com for free reservations. That's mz at kscohealth.com. Hello folks, Michael Olson here, talking with Rena Mills, RV Service Center, way up at the top of Santa Cruz 2525 Mission. Rena, it's been hot, bad news for RV roofs. What happens during the summer is all those sealants at the top of your roof start cracking up, and in the winter, when the rain comes, you've got nothing but leaks everywhere. Well, it rained. So what should people do now that the rainy season is coming? Stop by RV Service Center for a free roof inspection. We climb up and we check all the sealants, caulkings to make sure that they're still rubberized and flexible enough to keep your RV watertight. So Rena had a good friend who backed up under some trees and now he's got a little nick on his roof. What should he do? Bring it down to RV Service Center. We'll inspect it and you can actually claim that as an insurance claim and receive a new roof. When you have your insurance work completed at RV Service Center, we give you a gift certificate equal to the value of your deductible. Wow, that's like a free repair. RV Service Center 2525 Mission, way up at the top of Santa Cruz. Keep the water out, keep the fun in. Welcome back to the Costa Report. I'm Rebecca Costa, and my guest today is the founder of Full Power Technology, Mr. Philippe Kahn. And before the break, you were making the point that we can see the role of sleep in nature by simply observing our dogs who wake up in a ready state at a moment's no- notice, and, and then they lay right back down and go back to sleep. <laughs> and I want to give you an opportunity to finish that thought. Well, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it, it's fascinating to see how opportunistic they are about their sleep and how healthy they are and how able they are to 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 sleep at any time and get up and and be active at a moment's notice and 
and they don't need their cup of coffee uh, just to get going, as, as, you know, <laughs> to, to turbo fuel. I mean, I, I always look at my dogs like that, and they're great athletes and they're great dad. And I say, you know, if I can achieve that, that then then I'm good. And and if any human can achieve that, and I know it's not realistic for some people, but the concept that that we have to sleep in in uninterrupted ways all the time in a perfectly quiet environment in a perfectly dark room at a perfect temperature with a perfect sound to me is just a it, it, it's just a, a misconception and something that's misleading people i think is much more important for people to 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 understand how to to optimize their sleep and 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 become the, the, this much more flexible human as as from an evolutionary standpoint we we should be like our 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 good friends the the, the canines who co-evolved with us for twenty five thousand years and and hadn't been uh, conditioned with having to you know sleep an uninterrupted night quite the contrary yes now do you mind if I ask you if twenty six minutes is optimal for you. How long between uh, those intervals? When do you need another 26-minute sleep? Okay, so I think, I think the, the, the practical way to look at it for, for Mrs. and Mr. Everyone that, that you know, has a job and works is that you sleep as much as you can. You know, you get four hours of sleep, five hours. What is it? Whatever it is at night, what, what the reality is. And then you complement that sleep budget. It's just like a, a sleep budget is very similar to 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 basically um, to to basically a financial budget. You know, mm-hmm. you can't spend more than you have, and so you have to replenish it before you spend it again. Or otherwise, you start you know being financially unhealthy or or or, or, or from unhealthy in a way. So what I what I do practically every day is I sleep you know, at night, what I sleep and I, I, you know, I monitor how much I actually sleep. And if I, let's say I get four and a half hours of sleep, I realize that my, I, I need a couple of power naps during the day. And I take those couple of power naps. Usually after you sleep about six hours later, you feel that urge to go back to sleep, whatever happened. It's the six-hour thing. That's where in, in Spanish the word siesta comes from. Siesta comes from six hours because naturally after six hours you get up, you get that urge to get that little power nap, which the, the Sp- Spanish uh, people call siesta. Mm-hmm. And and so this is a perfect example, a perfect time to get that 30 minute nap and then naturally feel when you get that sleepiness and get that nap i think the the most important thing is to monitor who you are and what you do as opposed to get a formula from someone like myself or whoever it is a a sleep specialist who tell you you got to sleep now because you got to sleep now it really doesn't work it's like telling someone who who has depression why are you depressed you should be happy it's the same story (laughs) (laughs) It's the same story, you know, yeah, the world is good, your life is good, you should be depressed, but that doesn't work that way. And sleep is exactly that. The more you feel like you have to sleep, the less you're going to sleep. And so the key is to reestablish that that natural feel for, for what you actually need. And I understand it's sometimes challenging. But I think it becomes challenging when people take too many, too many sleep aids, people just get and and I think it's very important to to realize that even naturally we know that people six hours after they first wake up, something happens. An interesting statistic, by the way, is that, you know, we always say we're sleep deprived in America and we've done a lot of, uh, we've got a, a lot of recordings, uh, half a million nights of recordings of sleep from, from uh, uh, sorry, 500 million nights of recorded sleep that we've, we've, we've analyzed through monitors from people from all over the world. We find is of the average, Americans force them sleep, themselves to sleep much more than people in India, in 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 China, or in Japan, for example. And Japan is a very good example of people sleep less, but the average lifespan is actually greater, and the the, the health and on the average of people is is better. So, so I, we're not sleep call. deprived in America. Well. I, I, I think that, that we, we, are, we are mismanaging the time we're sleeping and mm-hmm. forcing ourselves to sleep. And, and, and I think the victims, yes, I, I agree, in many ways we're not sleep deprived. We should, and, 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 but I think there's a lot of 
advertising and a lot of marketing that is speaking to people. Oh my God, you woke up, you got to take uh, Ambien or Lunesra or whatever it is, <laughs> IQL, whatever yes. it is. And people are drugging themselves with this stuff and, and forgetting that maybe you don't need to sleep that much and you're refreshed today and maybe take a power nap and don't, don't become anxious about your lack of sleep because I see that a lot with, you know, we work with a lot of people and we, we see a lot of people who become extra, Oh my God, I didn't get my nap sleep. You know, my beauty rest, what's going to happen. And, you know, beauty rest is a great brand for mattresses, but it, it, it is a fallacy for a lot of people. Yes. Maybe, uh, you know, you, 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 you need your beauty rest, but, but you can get it through power naps, et cetera, even if you didn't get it through the night and, you know, and you have children, young children or, 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 or pets and all that, you're going to be woken up during the night, especially if you're on young children. I mean, no, no young adults or, or older adults who, who, who manage young children get, a full night, so-called full night to sleep. Everybody gets interrupted. The kids come in. You have to go in their bedroom. You know, they're sick. Of course. They fall asleep. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it's a myth. The whole yeah, idea it is a myth. That, and we, we just have such a wrong idea about sleep and it's inconsistent with what's required in nature. You know, having get, waking up to a noise is a survival instinct. And you don't really want that to go away. <laughs> you want to be woken up when you hear a noise, and but you want to be able to get back to rest at a quick uh, at, at a quick pace. It's interesting that in the um, biography of Armon Hammer, the great businessman and Russian diplomat uh, that went back and forth uh, unofficially between the United States and the Soviet Union at the time, when when he was uh, asked to do his biography, he made a confession. Now, I thought this would be an interesting trivia thing for you but he made a confession to uh, his secretary that uh, every day of his working life uh, he used to go in shut the door lock the door and sign checks for two hours in the afternoon and when he wrote his but when uh, he was asked to do his biography he said I lied to everyone I would lay down behind my desk and take a 30 minute nap (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and he said because it allowed me to go till 11 and 12 o'clock at night with no problems whatsoever. And he said and it was my productivity was due to that 30 minute nap every single day of my life. I thought that was a very interesting confession on his part and speaks to what you're what you've been talking about all along. Now, we have to take one more short break. Uh, when we return, we'll talk about sleep tracker and the smart bed. So stay tuned. You're listening to the Costa Report. Big data is being generated by everything around us all the time. Every digital process and social media exchange produce it. Systems, sensors, and mobile devices transmit it. Big data is arriving from multiple sources with ever-increasing velocity, volume, and variety. It's becoming the world's newest resource for competitive advantage, allowing decision-making to move from the elite few to the empowered many. The escalating demand for insights requires a fundamentally new approach to architecture, tools, and practices. To extract meaningful value from big data, you need optimal processing power, analytics capabilities, and skills. Find out how IBM Big Data and Analytics can transform your business. Visit www.ibm.com slash bigdata today. That's www.ibm.com slash big data. Care from the Heart is a dedicated and professional home health care agency that's been serving families in the Tri-County Monterey Bay area for over 18 years. We help our clients and their families handle health challenges with determination, love, and humor. When you work with Care from the Heart, we provide assistance with the utmost respect. Your team will consist of nurses, case managers, and home care specialists who will listen and you will design a flexible program to fit your specific needs, either short-term or long-term. You might need help with medication, personal hygiene, meal preparation, transportation, companionship, household chores, or pet care. We can even help you with the dreaded insurance paperwork. 
If the time has come when you must step into the role of caregiver for a family member, naturally you'll have questions and concerns. Care from the Heart offers classes that provide specific information and skills you'll need to become the positive and supportive influence your family member deserves. And we protect against caregiver burnout by offering periodic respite care for you. Whatever your individual situation, now or in the future, help is available. For a complimentary consultation, call us at 831-476-8316. We can come to you or you are welcome to visit our office in Santa Cruz near Dominican Hospital. Our website is carefromtheheart.net. Hi, I'm Kathleen Richards, the host of House Calls, which airs on Thursday evenings from 8 to 9 on KSCO Radio 1080. Please tune in to find out answers to all those questions that you have about what's the best bang for the buck if I remodel my house. How do I find a great tenant? What happens with all those what ifs? And we'll answer those questions for you. So please tune in to House Calls on Thursday from 8 to 9 on KSCO Radio. Cash flows and money move. The Money Moves Show is dedicated to delivering tips and tools to help you earn more, save more, and protect your hard-earned assets. Host Pamela Fugit hetrick interacts with her guests and callers every Thursday night from 7 to 8 p.m. Recent topics have included what is going on locally with health insurance, tips to maximize your Social Security income, how do you build an emergency fund for your family, Medicare 101 tips, how do you choose and pay for home health care, and many other topics. So tune in, take notes, call and get answers to your financial questions from Pamela Fugit hedrick on Money Moves, Thursdays at 7 p.m. That's Money Moves, Thursdays. 7 p.m. on KSCO, AM 1080 Santa Cruz and KOMY 1340 Watsonville and 104.1 on your FM dial. Welcome back to the Costa Report. I'm Rebecca Costa, and if you're just joining us, my guest today is acclaimed technology pioneer and founder of Full Power Technology, Mr. Philippe Kahn. Now, your company makes something called Sleep Tracker, which is being used in a product called the Smart Bed. Can you tell us a little bit about Sleep Tracker and Smart Bed? So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, what we what we set up to build is an infrastructure for Internet of Things. That that allows to make sleep part of 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 the the automated home, the the Internet of Things. So just like you may be using um, an Amazon Echo, or you may be using a Nest thermostat, you will have a smart bed that integrates with all the system. For example, you know the last thing you do before you fall asleep usually is set your alarm system, uh, make sure your garage doors are locked, and blah, 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 and blah, 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 and, and, and set your thermostat for, for the night, et cetera. Uh, and the first thing you do when you wake up is when, when you're supposed to wake up is maybe start the coffee machine and, and uh, you know, one day maybe start your poached eggs or something like that. So the, the whole idea of being able to, to monitor all that, including, for example, you know, uh, uh, um, what we find is that, you know, it, Normal ways to induce um, deeper sleep is actually to vary the temperature of the bedroom through the night at different times, et cetera. Because, of course, central heating and all that was not something that, from an evolutionary standpoint, humans were used to. And actually, it was colder during the night, and people got colder. And so we, we got used to actually sleep in a, in a more restful way. Uh, when it got colder. And so the whole idea of creating an environment that is yeah, optimize that is tied to 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 that Internet of Things is is, is what we we set out to build the sleep tracker uh, infrastructure for, and so we we actually built this this solution that is going to be shipped by our partners uh, who, who make beds, uh, the people at Serta and Simmons. Uh, in, in the United States who are going to ship, you know, um, smart beds, which you could put in your bedroom and will non-invasively 
monitor your sleep, monitor your heart rate, your respiration rate, everything while you're sleeping without, you know, having to wear anything, without having to change your mattress, put special sheets on, uh, wire yourself, wear a watch or a band or something like that, you know, magically, you know, sense your your heart rate and your breathing rate, et cetera. And from there, understand, you know, what's happening with your sleep. And so that will provide a tool for people to, to start putting, you know, when they, they get a bed, a bed, a box mattress or something like that, and said they get this smart bed, which looks like a normal, uh, normal bed. And that will give them a lot of analytical and useful information as to how to naturally improve their sleep. So if I understand this right, it, the sensor technology will be monitoring your heart rate, your, per, your breathing rate, your, your perspiration, whatever. It, it, the sensor information is going to then be transmitted to some kind of analytics engine that will then determine how, you're, how you sleep throughout the night and what might be optimal for you. So tying this into the Internet of Things, for example, I am a person who the room has to be cold. And people freak out because sometimes I go skiing and it's snowing and before I can go to bed, I got to crack the window. (laughs) And everyone says, what are you doing? It's freezing in here. I need it to be cold to sleep. And and I know I get the best sleep when it is cold. When the room is really hot, I I have a hard time falling asleep. Um, And so, you know, a sensor would maybe cut the heat in the room for me once it once it sensed I was no longer uh, active and no longer moving is that what it would do that is absolutely one example and and uh, yes you're absolutely right I mean I if I travel in a hotel the first thing I do in the hotel even if it's uh, freezing outside I set the air conditioner to max usually to cool my 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 room as much as possible because like you I sleep better when, when the environment is cold. Um, and, and of course, there, what we found out is even better is that you can actually modulate that temperature through the night to match your sleep cycles. As you wake up, uh, as you're in a lighter sleep cycle, because you go through these cycles all night, you can slightly uh, elevate the temperature and then lower that temperature. I mean, that's a very sophisticated way to do that. Lower that temperature when you get to the deeper sleep cycle and actually you get more restful sleep that way. So that's kind of an extreme way to use this technology. So let's tie all Absolutely. this together for the listeners. Let's just for a minute because, you know, you're, I mean, you're, you are such a technology genius. We may be li- leaving me and the average person on the street behind. So let's tie it all together. I lay down in a bed. Right. And my temperature goes up and down. And depending on that, it, uh, the bed may sense those metrics and analyze them and then has the ability to communicate to a heater or an air conditioning unit in order to optimize my sleep. Is that is that a fair description? Exactly. And so you have a cloud component in there that has, as you describe, an analytics engine, and it's able to talk through the Internet of Things. And, uh, you know, uh, depending on which infrastructure you use, the different manufacturers like Apple, Android, et cetera, uh, it, it, it talks to these other devices like intelligent thermostats, et cetera, and is able to m- modulate things. It can even, you know, pick your music for waking you up from your Internet of Things, enable music system, et cetera. And it can start so, my coffee pot when, when it senses that I'm gotten up from the bed. Exactly. You, everything can be ready. It can even start your car engine if you, you want to do that and, and uh, you know, heat your, 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 your you know, heat your, your um, uh, bathroom, et cetera. The other thing is that what we, what, what, what we find out is that just like you have a certain length of, of, of sleep that makes sense for a power nap, there is an optimal time to wake up, which is not necessarily when you set your alarm clock. The last cycle in all the cycles you go through the night, you go through multiple cycles, maybe three, four, five, depending on people. That last cycle is very critical to feel refreshed when you wake up to actually get up at the proper time in the cycle, which is not get into another cycle. And that's, you know, sometimes you sleep longer, you, 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 you get woken up at your alarm clock. And, and you, you feel, feel more longer. tired. You feel, uh, you know, I, this right. is a problem for me when I go on vacation. 
Because what are you supposed to do when you go on vacation? Most people eat and sleep. And and I feel more tired. <laughs> I don't require that much sleep. So I'm the perfect person for us to be talking about this because I have never required more than three and a half to four hours of sleep a night. I, 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 I've i never needed it ever since I was a child. And my mother had the good sense to take me into a doctor. He was a, we, we lived near a military base, and she hauled me into a doctor at a military base and asked what was wrong with her child. And I wish I could track this guy down. He said to my mother, leave her alone. (laughs) That was a smart, that was a smart physician because a lot of people would have had a different, different reaction. That's great. It's exactly true. Is that listen to your body, you listen. And and it's very difficult to listen to your body in in an environment where people take way too many supplements, very, you know, are are way too conditioned. But the more you get to that, to that, you peel the the layers of the onion up, the more you're able to actually naturally optimize your, your sleep. So waking up at that right period of time is something that the smart bed will do also. It senses everything and then can, can modify slightly your, your your wake up time to, to be a little earlier because actually you'll feel more refreshed than if you uh, sleep past one of those cycles. And now, who's so, making you, these beds? Who's going to make the smart beds? Uh, so it, they're going to be made by and actually launch uh, uh, commercially uh, before the end of April by um, both Serta and Simmons which are the two leaders, uh, market leaders for betting in North America. Okay. Well, folks, you heard it here. Serta and Simmons, you can get your smart beds. I know people are going to be lining up behind the block uh, to, to get one of these. We have to take another break. We'll be right back with Philippe Kahn. You're listening to the Costa Report. Do you love creating salads as much as you enjoy eating them? Hi, I'm Amy Tobin, cookbook author and culinary expert. Dole inspires fresh and wholesome dishes for any meal with their wide selection of salad blends and all-natural salad kits. From the mild and tender texture of sweet butter lettuce to the crunch of classic romaine sprinkled with colorful shredded carrots and red cabbage, Dole has over 30 salad blends to satisfy every palate. If you're looking for the ultimate in convenience, try Dole's unique salad kit combinations that include farm-fresh lettuces and vegetables, mouth-watering all-natural toppings, and specially made dressings. It's all you need to make a distinctively delicious salad. The possibilities are endless. Visit www.dolesalads.com for recipes and other ideas to feed your culinary imagination. Caraccioli Cellars recently celebrated the fifth anniversary of their tasting room. We caught up with Scott Caraccioli, who told us a little about Caraccioli's quick rise to success. I'm very excited and very um, proud to be here sharing our wines with some of our wine family and our biggest supporters over the last five years. It's been an amazing ride, quickest five years of my life, and it's been a real joy to share our family's passion with a lot of our closest friends. I'm a full believer in it being a real experience, not just juice in a bottle. And I think when you come in the door of the tasting room, the experience that you have with the staff and the aesthetics, the wine and all the way down, that's what we really try to deliver. We want you to have a great time, enjoy the wine from the start to finish. Visit the Caraccioli Tasting Room on Dolores Street in Carmel-by-the-Sea or find us online at caracciolicellars.com or reach us by phone at 831-622-7722. Wow, I'm standing outside the Staff of Life Natural Food Store watching choppers buzz in and out like bees at their hive on a hot summer day. I'm wondering, what do all those shoppers find at Staff of Life they can't find at the big box store? Let's ask. Tom, I've been shopping at Staff of Life since they first opened. It's always good. Good prices, good selection. You always see people you know, like you. Hi, my name's Kalila. 
They're wonderful people, and I like to give my business to the people in my community. They have a good meat department. They have a great produce department. I mean, you can't find anything like this. It's for me that it's very satisfying to shop here. Sharon Santa Cruz, Staff of Life, has the best food. Um, I get fresh everything I need. They have a lot of things I can't find anywhere else. Think local first and eat local first by shopping in genuine Santa Cruz tradition. The original locally owned Staff of Life natural food store at 1266 SoCal Avenue in Santa Cruz. If you can't find it at Staff of Life, maybe you don't want to find it. The Cannabis Connection is the media outlet for the community to engage with policy, science, culture, and industry professionals in order to orient themselves in the rapidly evolving cannabis renaissance in our society. Our goal is to educate and open a dialogue surrounding the potential that this plant provides to heal people's ailments, but also heal our society from a social and economic standpoint. Tune in and participate in the process of building awareness and raising consciousness through education on the Cannabis Connection. Every Saturday from 12 noon to 1 o'clock on KSCO, it's Perspectives with Dr. David Biles and Tom Quinn. Perspectives covers a number of topics, including holistic health, vaccinations, and government waste. Don't miss the next exciting Perspectives program here on AM1080 KSCO. Every Saturday from 12 noon to 1, right here. Welcome back to the Costa Report. I'm Rebecca Costa, and my guest today is Philippe Kahn, and we've been talking about Sleep Tracker and the Smart Bed, which is the brainchild of full power technology and will be released by Serta and Simmons uh, in, I believe, the next month or so. Mr. Kahn, do you have any idea what the price point uh, or the price range of this product might be? Yeah, I have a pretty good idea. So the first thing is that You'll be able to keep your mattress, uh, whatever it is, whether it's a, uh, a beauty rest mattress, a tempur mattress, whatever it is, your whole bedding. So you don't have to change anything. So what you're getting is, a, is, is basically a, a, a modern adjustable frame, which means that you can adjust the geometry and, and, you know, it moves and it has remote control. It's actually really cool. And, and, and so it, it can adapt to adjust the shape of your, your body, whatever you want. And, and it goes underneath. It replaces basically what, what people usually call a box spring. And prices will basically range from uh, a little under $1,000 to the, you know, uh, high-end model, you know, California King, King double split, uh, independent splits with two remote controls of probably about $2,500. So uh, it, 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 it varies between, you know, the, the, the high hundreds to the to to the twenty five hundred dollars and it includes everything you need all the remotes all the uh, the interface to to your iPhone or to your Android phone the the cloud uh, infrastructure the coaching it includes basically everything the sleep analysis the reports etc so it's actually a, a a real nice solution and considering the fact that people spend a third of their lives uh, in or around their beds, which is, you know, about eight hours a day in their, in their bedroom, a lot of people. Uh, that's not a big investment compared to, to the investment that people make in their cars where they usually set maybe two hours a day. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, it's actually a very exciting product and, and, and something that's really worth checking out. Well, it is. You know, I never thought about, uh, innovation in the sleep area until we were preparing for this interview with you. And I realized that the only innovation that I have seen is relative to softness or firmness of a mattress, whether it was a water bed or an air bed or, uh, you know, or, or some of these uh, cushioned um, pillow tops and, uh, and other kinds of foam beds. And, and so it was all related to softness and firmness of the mattress. And then the, the only other uh, innovation has been pharmaceuticals. Yeah, mostly pharmaceuticals because, I mean, it's a huge industry. I mean, a lot of what drives innovation is a business opportunity. And so we were very lucky that when we approached uh, the people at, at Serta and Simmons, 
they were looking at creating, you know, the, the digital debt of the 21st century. And we said, well, we've been working on this for years. And, you know, why don't we partner and make this happen together? And this is this is precisely what happens because the betting industry is very different. You know, you don't it, it's hard to most people go into a a, a sleep train store or some other store, a Sears store or, or a Macy's store to look at beds and try them out and all that. It's a little different than than uh, buying socks uh, on Amazon. And so um, we, we, we thought that it would be very important to work together with a company that, that, were, that, that is actually putting these smart beds, that could put these smart beds in showrooms where people would actually go and check them out and see what this could do for them. Because, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it's something that people like to experience themselves when they have to, to buy a, a really new mattress, a new bed, et cetera. And that's something that doesn't happen as much as mail order or through Amazon, or you can't download a smart bed, basically. Right. Well, we like to lay down on the mattress and see what it might feel like. And uh, and I think that that's the perfect opportunity to try out a smart bed and then to get more informed because it, it's not always the bed that's going to determine our, our sleep and optimizing it. It's the information that we have and to the extent that we can control the environment around the bed. Uh, and I think that this is this is a perfect opportunity to do this. I have to say I'm surprised that the price is quite reasonable. Yeah, well, I mean, we're not talking about a Tesla here. (laughs) Well, exactly. I mean, it's one of those where people should actually realize that uh, the smart bed can do much more for them than probably uh, changing for a new model of your car and do much more for their health. And and so we worked on sensor technology that would be scalable from a price standpoint. So actually, you could all get all these benefits, be able to to monitor heart rate, monitor respiration rate, uh, monitor motion on the bed, et cetera, be able to figure out, you know, the heartbeats of each of the two sleepers, even if there's a pad on the bed, et cetera, and create all that in a very financially scalable way so we could create a product, a solution that would be appealing to Mrs. and Mr. Everyone. Of course, and as you know, as more of these sell, of course, the price point will come down as well. And what I love about it is, is that that this you've made it very easy to analyze our sleep by having easy to use applications. That's exactly right. And so you, the dashboard for your whole system is your 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 iPhone or your your Android phone, and so you you actually get your analysis. You get. You know, it's a very complex system with beds, with the cloud and all that, but you never see that as an end user. All you see is the dashboard on your iPhone, which gives you a complete analytical view of what happened. And, you know, you, I know that you, you're, you're keen on big data, and, and a, lot, a lot of your, your, your advertisers are, are people who sell big data analytical tools. But think of it that way. You know, we analyze your sleep uh several times a minute throughout the whole night, actually almost every second. Yes. And then our, our, our big data machine learning software that runs in the cloud delivers to you automatically an analysis and tips and, and tricks and ways to optimize your sleep directly on your iPhone or your Android phone. Absolutely. And, you know, that's the beauty of big data and and the new field of analytics. We don't need to know all the mass of data that's being gathered by these sensors 24-7. And we don't even need to know the process. What we need to know is the critical information that will allow us to make better decisions, you know, for our health, for our rest. You know, it doesn't really matter what it is. The back-end engine may be big data analytics, but at the end of the day, it's making the interface and the ability to make better choices uh that is i think the most important and you've made that very easy exactly it, the idea is to turn piles of unorganized data into useful information <laughs> and uh and you've certainly done that sir uh, lastly before we run out of time could you give the website the full website address for full power so listeners can get more information about sleep tracker in the smart bed uh, well, our website is fullpower.com, uh, one word, like full power, uh, or you can also go to sleeptracker.com, uh, but uh, fullpower.com works, and, and, and you find a lot of information there. 
And I'm afraid that is all the time that we have today. But before we say goodbye, I want to thank you for making time to speak with us. Thank you, Mr. Khan. Well, thank you for having us. Uh, it's a great show, and uh, and uh, you do a great job. Thank you very much, and I hope you'll come back soon. If your station is leaving us after the first hour and you have a question or a comment to make about our interview with Philippe Kahn, you can email me at RebeccaCosta.com or drop me a note on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. As you know, sensor technologies are about to change everything about the way we live, from how much and how we sleep to analyzing our nutritional needs and much more. And this data will be gathered and analyzed and fed back to us 24-7 so we can optimize our health, our productivity, our everything. Sensors are taking the guesswork out of just about everything. And before you know it, we will be almost as efficient as a robot. (laughs) But is this such a good thing? Send your comments to me at RebeccaCosta.com. Are we ready for the brave new world of the Internet of Things? And if you happen to miss the full interview with Philippe Kahn today, remember you can download previous episodes of the Costa Report from our website, Apple iTunes, Podbean, and our YouTube channel. And while you're at the RebeccaCosta.com site, be sure you catch the weekly program blog. We publish a blog every week that's designed to keep you in the know and and keep you using all those fabulous God-given neurons in your head. (laughs) And speaking of smart neurons, my guest next week is former Democratic Senate Majority Leader Tom Daschle, who has recently published a book with former Republican Senate Majority Leader Trent Lott titled Crisis Point in which both leaders take aim at bridging the current partisan divide in Washington. Don't miss Tom Daschle next week right here on the only news program that puts policy ahead of politics. Now stay tuned for a second hour of Straight Talk Radio. You're listening to the Costa Report. As a scientist who works hard to stay on top of current events and trends, I know how easy it is to get caught up in the details of a story and lose sight of the big picture. What is happening to society as a whole? Where are we headed? Why does it feel as if there's greater instability, unrest, and danger in the world? The truth is, very few of us have time to contemplate these questions. And if we're waiting for our leaders or the media to paint a clear picture, well, we may be in for a long wait. That's why I'm urging you to grab a copy of The Watchman's Rattle. Do it now. Go to RebeccaCosta.com. Find out why scientists, government leaders, and the heads of the largest corporations in America are waking up to a newly uncovered pattern of human behavior. That's The Watchman's Rattle at RebeccaCosta.com, a bestseller in 26 countries and a book that Richard Branson, Donald Trump, and experts everywhere are calling a must-read. That's The Watchman's Rattle, available at bookstores everywhere and online at RebeccaCosta.com. Hi, I'm Matt Kenseth. You don't have to be a race car driver to know that life can be full of drama. Some of it you can't control, like mechanical issues, high winds, and rain delays. But there's some drama you can skip. Skip the drama that comes with not having your high school diploma or equivalency. Find free adult education classes near you and finish your diploma. Visit finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. You just need to take that first step and find free classes near you and leave the drama for the racetrack. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ed Council. Hi, this is Greg. Marlene and I host Flavors on KSCO 1080 Sundays, noon to 2. Hey, guess what, gang? Easter's coming up. A lot to talk about. We've got vegetarian Thai. What's that got to do with Easter? You'll find out. Holtz Restaurant's going to stop by. Sunset. Birchwood Cafe. Mmm. Don't want to miss this Sunday, noon to 2 on KSCO 1080. Surfing Northern California for over 65 years. This is KSCO Santa Cruz.
This hour of the Costa Report is brought to you by IBM. Big data at the speed of business. Welcome back to the second hour of the Costa Report. I'm Rebecca Costa, and during the first hour, we had an opportunity to speak with legendary Silicon Valley entrepreneur and inventor, Mr. Philippe Kahn, who, as you know, founded Borland Software in the early 80s and was responsible for the very first camera phone. And just think of how much the camera phone has changed our world. According to Kahn, it suddenly made everyone a photojournalist and videographer. Overnight, we were seeing crude homemade videos of police brutality, Islamic genocide, and children and dogs doing hilarious things over the internet, thanks to the fact that the mobile phones we carry everywhere could capture still and moving images. Though Khan has had more successes than most entrepreneurs when it comes to changing the way we live, he has not been content to sit back and enjoy the fruits of his labor. His latest company, Full Power Technology, is tackling the difficult task of optimizing sleep and rest by leveraging the latest in sensor and analytic technology. Now, I admit I did not know a lot about sleep before our staff here at the Costa Report started doing research in preparation for Mr. Khan's appearance. Uh, I happen to be one of those people that falls asleep very quickly within seconds of laying down and I don't wake up not even once until the following moment in fact at morning in fact sometimes uh, I'm in the same position that I fell asleep in when I sleep I drift off into a extremely deep sleep where I hear and notice nothing and uh, that would be a great disadvantage in nature a predator would catch me in a second my father used to call it the sleep of the dead The fact is, I'm in such a deep sleep, I'd be the kind of person who would not hear the fire alarm go off, and I would simply just perish in a fire. And so, for people who wonder, how in the heck can that happen? Well, there's your answer. According to Khan, a sailboat is a great laboratory. On a challenging voyage, such as sailing from San Francisco to Hawaii with only two people on board, you have to be alert at all times. And if you're trying to beat the world record in terms of time, well, it means optimizing everything and anything you can, which includes the time you can each take to sleep and get physically and mentally rested. It was on his sailboat that Khan discovered that 26 minutes was the amount of sleep which yielded the highest productivity, alertness, and physical strength. So he and his sailing mate began sleeping in very short intervals, testing Khan's theory about sleep as they went along. Well, this story has a good ending on two fronts. First, Khan successfully broke the two-person Trans-Pacific sailing speed record. And second, when he returned, he was excited to see how sensor and data analytics could be used to improve the sleep and health and productivity of all human beings. The first step was to use his company's Motion X activity tracking technology to determine when the body was in rest and when it was in motion so that when the body was at rest, it could be awakened to optimize sleep. And second, he parlayed the technology into something called a smart bed, which you can learn more about by visiting his company's website at Full Power Technology. Once you look into what Khan has discovered about the way we sleep today and how we were designed by nature to sleep, I'm sure it will change the way you think about rest and recuperation. But sleep is only one area where sensor technology is about to change the world as we know it. The fact is sensor, the, uh, the sensor revolution is likely to have the same kind of disrupting effect to businesses in daily life as the Internet once had. And who can remember what life was like before the Internet? <laughs> Not me. Sensors in our clothes, sensors in our cars, sensors in our diapers, dinner plates, refrigerators, our shoes will be gathering data 24-7 and analyzing that data to inform us of changes we cannot otherwise detect. Sensors will analyze your baby's diaper and an athlete's sweat for nutritional deficiencies. They'll alert your phone when your 16-year-old is driving over the speed limit. They'll alert you when... Uh, Frozen food has overheated and is no longer safe to eat. These sensors will be gathering data in real time and looking for variations and patterns, then feeding this information back to us so we can make the needed corrections. 
But just how equipped is the human brain to deal with all of this data and all these new decisions and corrections headed our way? If you've read my book, The Watchman's Rattle, then you know that physical evolution moves much slower than social progress. And this has been a problem since the beginning of humankind. Our brains are not changing nearly as fast as we need them to. And so many of us feel overwhelmed and defeated by the things we ought to know, we ought to do, and yet we don't. It's likely the growing wave of sensors and the data that comes with them will produce a wave of complexity we're ill-equipped to manage without the help of some very, very simple and easy user interfaces. And by simple interfaces, I mean things like traffic lights. (laughs) A simple green, red, (laughs) yellow systems our brain can understand and react to. Hey, there's a reason it works the same in every country and for all humans. I have no issue with smart machines and smart data or with optimization, but there is a limit as to what the human brain can at this particular point in time in evolution accommodate. And from that standpoint, the limiting factor may well be biology and not technology itself. And on that note, I'm feeling like I need a nap. (laughs) All this talk about sleep has made me sleepy. So we're going to go ahead and take a few minutes to hear from today's sponsors. And when we come back, Charles Friedman and Bill Graff will be joining me for our weekly roundtable. And I I hope the two of them, they haven't come into the studio yet. I think I'm going to have to go out there and either give them some coffee or wake them up. I have a feeling they're probably deep sleepers also. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with Bill Graff and Charles Friedman. You're listening to the Costa Report. 